Hey guys, it's Chris. Today I'm going to show you how to rapidly put together an MVC application and how to get it authenticated using Google and how to use that with identity. Super easy. We're going to be doing mostly command line and um, this stuff changes really fast. So if you're watching this video six, ten months from now and it doesn't apply, I apologize. But hopefully most of this will still apply. But this .NET Core um, it just seems to change really fast. Now that we're in .NET 5, hopefully it will not. But uh, without further ado, let's get uh, to see the code and less of me, more for you. All right. We're going to do .NET New. If you're not familiar with .NET New, if you have the .NET tool set installed and have it in your system path, you can use it in PowerShell here. And .NET New is going to create a new project from a template. If you just press Enter, it'll list for you the templates. Um, but in my case, .NET new, we're going to build an MVC project. We know that's the name of the template, so just MVC dash O for the output to state what you want to call your project, the project name. In my case, I'm calling it Party Boat. And then for the next thing, we're going to do um, dash dash auth and individual. So if you've done MVC before and you've chosen authentication in Visual Studio, you'll know that you click on individual to get individual user accounts. That's the one that creates those um, ASP tables in SQL Server. I'm going to press enter. And now it's created it. So if I do PWD here to look at my path uh, LS or DIR, you'll see that there's my party vote. So I'm going to change directory into party vote. And ls again, and you'll see that here's the CSPROJ project file, but no solution file. Okay, now we're going to add a package. So we're going to do .NET add package. Oops. Now I'm going to paste in Microsoft.ASPNetCore.Authentication.Google. All right, there we go. Now we're going to do .NET user dash secrets init to initialize user secrets. Now I've already initialized one, but the command for you will be just that .NET user dash secrets init. Now, if you're not familiar with user secrets, um, we can go into that in a separate video, or you could just Google it. It's a fantastic tool. Now in a production environment, you'll probably want to separate your application into user secrets and environment variables but that's probably beyond the scope of this project. The reason why we're creating the user secrets here is because we're going to store some secrets specific to your Google account that you're going to need to authenticate the users as they log in with Google. So just we'll take a quick detour over to the site and I'll show you how to set up that uh, Google authentication. And then we're going to come right back here and put in the secrets that it gives us into these user secrets here. Let's go. So you're going to need to go in here and go to console.developers.google.com forward slash APIs forward slash credentials. If you don't see a screen like this when you get there, you're going to have to sign up to use the Google APIs. You'll need a Google account and you'll have to activate your API account. You'll notice that there's free trials and things of that nature. Um, from what I've experienced with this authentication API, there doesn't seem to be a charge to it. But if you find out otherwise, please let the viewers know in the comments below. I'm sure that'd be very helpful to everybody. All right, so what's important here is the OAuth 2.0 client IDs. I've created one, um, but uh, you can go ahead and create one there. And as soon as you've got it created, you're gonna click on it and you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna make sure that the URI and it's most especially important, the redirect matches that of your application. But we'll get to that soon. For right now, you just need to pay attention to the client ID and the secret client that it provides. The client secret. Those we're going to put into our command. So come back over here and we're going to do .NET user dash secrets. And now we're going to do set. And right after that, you're going to do, you have to include the quotes here, authentication colon Google colon client ID and note the casing here. We've got capital A on authentication, capital G, capital C on client, capital I on ID. Hit a space and then you're going to paste in that client ID. Now don't use the same ID I have here. 
I'm going to delete it after this video is done, so it's not going to do any good. You do have to go in and create your account over there with Google APIs, okay? Press to enter. As you can see, it's been added to the secret store. Now we do have to add one more item to the secret store before we proceed. So once again, .NET user dash secrets set. And again, with the quotes. So back over here in your developer console over at Google, you're going to get that client secret. And this one is going to be authentication, Google. And just like how the other one was client ID, same manner, this one's going to be client secret. And I'm going to paste it in right next to it, and press return. And it's now been added to my secret store. All right, it's time to add a few more packages. So let's go. .NET add package Microsoft.ASP.NET Core .diagnostics .entity framework Core. We're going to need this one for Entity Framework. All right, now let's do .NET add package, and I pasted in Microsoft.entity framework core dot SQL server. Once again, needed for Entity Framework. This is for building that local uh, SQL server on your uh, SQL Express instance, sorry. Okay, one last package, .NET add package, and I'm gonna paste in ASP.NET Core, that one went on its own, <laughs> .identity UI. So that's for identity. There's a command that you might need. It's good just to run it anyways. I know I needed it this last time I was doing that. And that's just um, .NET tool update. And you can do dash dash global and it's .NET dash EF. And what this is, is just updating your entity framework tools to be the latest. Because I know for me, last time I ran it, I was 500 and the latest as of the make of this video is 502. It's time to get your identity over to your database, to your SQL Express. So we're going to do .NET. .NET EF for Entity Framework Migrations because we're doing code first to build the database. Add initial create. So .NET EF Migrations, add initial create. We're creating a migration called initial create. And once we execute that migration, it's going to go ahead and update the database and it's going to be stored so we could roll it back. Now we're going to do .NET EF database update. And that's going to execute that migration we just did and build it over there in SQL Server. So if you go to your SSMS and you refresh your databases, just ignore those other ones I have out there. You'll see it should show up as party vote. Looks like I've already got party vote though. Yours will show there. Okay, guys, it's time to go this uh, this path in Visual Studio. So open that path that you see in your console now in Visual Studio, and you'll find a CSPROJ file. Go ahead and open that. All right, go to your startup.cs and scroll down. Look for add controllers with views. Here it is right here. So it's already put in here for you, the identity, um, the context for entity framework and your SQL server, it's all available. So what we're gonna drop in here above add controls with views, but below default identity is your authentication. So we're saying services that add authentication, if you're familiar with .NET Core, that's, that's always in this file. It's always in the configure services method. Uh, we're going to be doing add Google and you're going to put in a Lambda here. You can call this whatever you want. I chose options. And within that, we're going to choose Google auth n section. And we're going to say get section authentication Google. And then you've got your two secrets that we put together earlier, client ID and client secrets. We are almost done, guys. Bear with me a little bit longer. Go down to... Uh, authorization and just make sure authentication is above that it should be but just make sure it's there now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop into the home controller and right above the class name you're going to put the authorized attributes you need control dot on that choose using microsoft.aspnet core dot authorization 
on your index, you're going to want to put and then allow anonymous because you want the user to be able to get to the page they're going to log in from, of course. Um, and why don't we use privacy as our an example for something that needs to be authenticated? Okay. So one more thing to do here: go right-click on your project, go to properties, go down to debug, and take a look at what that HTTPS port is, because you're going to have to go back in your Google API and allow that URL. This will only take a moment. So take a look here, click copy, and then we're going to shoot back over to that website. So I'm back over here, and you'll notice under authorized redirect URLs, um, you've got that sign in Google, and you've got your regular local host. Put that in both places and keep the sign in dash Google. If you don't have it, you need to add it. Hit save. Good deal. All right, so back in your application, one that I call Party Boat, go ahead and run it. All right, you'll see your standard welcome page here. Um, now let's click on privacy because we know that's a page that requires you to be logged in to get to. Oh, it didn't take you to privacy. Instead, it took you to the login page. Because we created this application with .NET New using the individual user accounts, you still have access to those, which is great. But you can also choose Google since we added Google to it. So click on that. It's going to pop up with all your Google accounts. Click on the one that you want to use. And you'll have to um, associate uh, an email account with this app if you want it to go ahead and do the, the tool where it asks you to verify user accounts. Uh, if you take a look at some of my older videos on identity, I think the first one I did on it, you'll see how I can, how you kind of do a rudimentary using Gmail to send with that. But I think what people are doing nowadays more commonly is they're using SendGrid and some other third-party tools. All right, so we've successfully registered. We're able to log in and see the privacy page now. And um, the second time going in, you're authenticated. You're successfully authenticated. So at this point, that concludes the scope of this video. Um, moving forward from here, the next step, if you wanted to keep going with this, would be to add roles and to add that email service to uh, as dependency injection. So this was a request. So hopefully the guy that requested it is watching this, the guy or gal. If you guys have any more requests for me, hopefully it's something I know. If it's not, I'll, I won't be shy. I'll let you know. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.